okay okay so i'm trying this again and it's weird because it's telling me my connection is unstable and i've never had any issues with my internet connection so this is like my third time um trying to you know connect with the stream yards but it seems to be doing a little bit better um i am not tech savvy so you're gonna have to work with me and also um you know with this true crime and and, and just reporting on different cases and stuff like that i got a lot of stuff to learn <laughs> so i'm sure um i'll be looking back one day and going what the heck <laughs> Because uh, it, it's, it's, it can be overwhelming, especially with somebody that's not uh, tech savvy like myself. So anyways, I hope everybody is doing good, um, you know, and I hope everybody is uh, staying safe and staying healthy. Um, and um, I've been trying to get to where I can do this every Sunday. And, oh, man, it's been a crazy past couple of weeks. Oh, my gosh. So I'm not even going into detail about it, but I don't want to, you know, I, I want to make sure that, you know, when I um, do these videos or live streams or however I choose to do it, that I, I'm giving my undivided attention and, um, you know, that it's purposeful. And so I had some crazy stuff going on and I really couldn't even get to uh schedule any time to set aside to come on here and do this now i was previously using um i don't know some kind of program on my computer <clears throat> and um it's got the big old banner going across the front i just it was annoying for me to have to look at so i just said you know what i'm gonna just do stream yards go live it's a lot going on on my end as far as but i guess over time i'll you know get used to it because all the other uh content creators seem to be able to navigate it just fine but um at some point i do want to you know um get to a point where i can um drop a link and and host a panel and people can come on and uh respectfully you know agree or disagree and give their ideas and opinions on certain cases that'll be covered whether it's you know recent cases or previous cases all of them are so interesting to me so at some point i'll be able to get tech savvy enough to do that i don't even know like right now if i did want to drop a link i don't even honestly know how to i don't so maybe somebody can <laughs> I'll have to look it up, but if somebody knows, they can just leave that in the comment section. Um, but yeah, so I did see about the case. Um, hold on one second. Let me pull it up because I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess up her name because I was reading. Uh, I was reading on it, but then I got kind of busy and stuff. But the uh, Gabby Petito case. And then um, in the midst of that was hearing, you know, different people discussing like, you know, well, how come nobody's covering the, the Jelani Day case? And, and I didn't even know. I was like, OK, so who is this guy? Let me, you know, look into it and see what's going on. And and um, I'm, I'm going to play a, a excerpt from. um I guess maybe, you know, I don't know. I guess it's the news or whatever. His mother came on and spoke. And I'm hoping that I don't get some kind of copyright strike. I don't know how any of this stuff works. But I just, I'm not going to try to, you know, say it in her words. If she can say it, it would be better to hear it from her. But uh, hopefully I don't get a copyright strike or the video don't get removed. If it does, I just really have to chop it up to trial and error and learn, you know how to do it different next time or just don't do it at all but um so this case other than me knowing what the guy looks like and knowing that he was you know missing and um just now like you know discovering that his body was found i don't know anything about uh the case but i definitely wanted to be someone to put it out there um because she needs answers, you know, and she deserves answers. 
um, and whose family wouldn't. And so um, I'm just going to go and dive in. Um, this is, I will give you a little disclaimer. This is definitely not your traditional um, true crime channel, I guess, if you want to say, um, because I am so not experienced with this kind of stuff. <laughs> like these people come on here and they're able to uh, memorize and you know, all this information and stuff. And I just, I, I'm just trying my best. Okay. So I just want to be able to put some stuff out there that may hopefully at some point generate some type of leads or information to, you know, help bring families closure, bring answers, bring awareness, you know, um, you know, just basically to a degree, a small degree, you know, because I, 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 I'm not a, obviously I'm a new YouTuber, just be a voice for, for the victims, for their cases to be heard and not to be forgotten. I think that's important. Um, you know, not to just be looked at like, oh, it's just another case. And, you know, and it's, 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 it's different, you know, uh, and I guess it would hit a person different if it was their family member. They wouldn't look at it like that. And uh, fortunately, I, I have not had to have anything like that personal take place in my life. But, um, you know, and I'm grateful for that. But I uh, also want to make sure that I at least create on my channel a space where um, it's just more than just this interesting story for everybody to just sit and listen to. Uh, Cause these are real people, you know, they live real lives. They have family members that still, you know, it could be years later. And for them, it feels like it just happened. So you always want to be respectful of that and just, and uh, I, I don't know. I just, to me, I just think it's just important to remember people that, you know, have gone missing and, something has happened or you haven't found any resolution. Um, I mean, any case is important, but I don't know. It's just something about missing persons. Just that, how can I put it? Um, the not knowing, you know, what, what happened, all the what ifs and all the questions. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and I'm just going to read over some articles or whatever I find on him. Now he's a handsome young man. I definitely uh, have found a couple articles that give some information. It says uh, Jelani Day was someone you couldn't help but love, says his mom, uh, who suspects uh, foul play in death. Okay. Uh, he did not disappear into thin air, said Carmen Bolden Day, Jelani's mother. Obviously, that is the truth. Um, I'm not too sure why. I'm just going to read. I'm not even going to worry about it. I, I'll go into that maybe later uh, as to why he didn't get the coverage, because Petito was all over everywhere, just everywhere, everywhere you go, you've seen it. And. I didn't even know anything about this young man. He's um, apparently, uh, where was it? He is a uh, Illinois State University grad student. So, you know, he was definitely doing something with himself. And I don't know why he didn't get the coverage, but one could speculate. Um, but this says the mother of Jelani Day wants answers. It's been over a month. And, and, and just keep in mind, um, this is posted October 1st, 2021. So this is just a few days ago. Um, it's been over a month since the 25-year-old aspiring speech pathologist body was recovered from the banks of the Illinois River soon after the grad student was reported missing. Let me grab something real quick here, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, just 30 seconds, if that. Uh, Day's mother, Carmen Bolden Day, spoke to Good Morning America and ABC News this week and confirmed the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Behavioral Analysis Unit is on the case, but that they are analyzing 
her son. Okay, so um, I don't understand that really, but whatever it takes to find out what happened to him, that's what I want them to do. And I, and I was just thinking that too. I was like, well, what does that mean? Like, okay, analyzing her son. And I guess maybe they're trying to figure out like, you know, his personality and what type, you know, just what type of person he was and what he may be inclined to to do or what type of activity he might be inclined to be in or something like that, maybe to try and, I guess, piece together what happened to him. Um, but it said, she said, whatever it takes to find out what happened to him, um, that's what I want them to do. Bolden Day told ABC New News, I want them to use their tools and their resources so that we can find out what happened to Jelani because he did not disappear in the thin air. Bolden Day told GMA her son was ambitious and driven and bound for great things. He was focused. Bolden Day continued. He was energetic and full of life. Jelani was a person that you couldn't help but love. Um, so, you know, 25-year-old grad student. He wanted to be a doctor. He's missing, and his family is definitely pleading for the public's help. Bolden Day told ABC's, ABC News and GMA, she believes, which is Good Morning America, she believes that Jelani was a victim of foul play. Investigators have yet to release an official cause of death, but Haley Besner, an attorney for the family, previously told Newsy, the evidence collected thus far suggests Jelani did not end up in the river willingly. Bolden Day said to GMA that she, she needs the right person to come forward. Somebody knows something, somebody seen something, and I need somebody to say something, she said. Day, who was enrolled at Illinois State University, was last seen on campus August 24th. So this li this really, really just happened. Um, his family reported him missing August 25th. Um, related, a body found in Illinois identified as missing 25-year-old Jelani Day, Besner told Newsy that day never in his life been to Peru, been to Peru, okay, where his car was recovered on August 26th with his plates removed. Oh, wow. That's okay. So here we go. Um, she also said day's phone remains missing, but said his wallet was found in a different location than where his vehicle and body were found. Okay. So let me process this okay so why okay says body found in illinois identified as missing 25 year old jelani day okay and then it's going on to say that uh the attorney besner told newsy um let me see something real quick here y'all okay that uh he had never in a, a day in never in his life been to peru Okay, where his car was recovered on the 26th. So they reported him missing on the 25th. His car is recovered on the 26th um, with his plates removed. Okay, and that's obviously signifying some type of foul play. Um, she also said Day's phone remains missing, but said his wallet was found in a different location than where the vehicle and his body were found. So they just got his stuff scattered all about. Day's remains were recovered September 3rd. Okay. So some weeks later, um, an identification wasn't formally made until the last, I'm sorry, until late last month by the LaSalle County Coroner's Office through forensic dental identification and DNA testing and comparison. We want to keep up with the latest crime coverage. Okay, so that's just uh, telling you to sign up for some. So Besner told Newsy. Investigators have no suspects at this time and are working to try to pin down Day's whereabouts in the days after he was last seen. And so I'm thinking that that is where um, the behavior analyst unit uh, comes in at from the FBI because they're you know, reanalyzing uh, her son. So I'm thinking that's why they want to try to have some kind of idea of what type of person he was and and uh his whereabouts you know in the days after he was last seen now besner previously said she believes someone knows knows what happened today 
who did his undergrad at Alabama, okay, who did his undergrad at Alabama A&M, where he was a member of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity. She says she was hopeful someone would come forward so his family could finally have answers. So, you know, I should have, well, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't say I should have uh, done research prior to going live. I do the, you know, video how I want to do it. It's my channel. But um, I just have to work out the kinks. It's not going to be like cookie cutter perfect because my brain be all over the place sometimes. But um, so it says Jelani Day's body is identified a month after the grad student went missing. I'm just going through another one. Uh, the search for Jelani, they call him JJ. Day is officially over at the coroner's office in LaSalle County. Uh, identified a body found in the river as Days. The Illinois State University grad student had been missing since August 24th, and the cause of the circumstances of his death are being investigated. Um, this is a little bit more detail on this article. Day 25 had been living in Bloomington, where he aspired to be a doctor. Two days after his disappearance, his car was found in Peru. And I'm just really trying to wrap my head around, okay, so that's, okay, it says a small city, an hour north of Bloomington. So, cause I'm like, where is, <laughs> where is this, this Peru? Okay. They didn't say that in the, in the last, uh, on the last article. And this gives a lot more details. The white Chrysler 300 was spotted in a wooded area south of Illinois Valley YMCA. Police said, uh, inside the car were his clothes, were the clothes they had been wearing when he was last seen. So, Nine days after the car was found, authorities discovered his body in the Illinois River after a search that was triggered by a tip. Okay, and that's what the uh, new station WGLT reports. Um, and it got the nerve to, on this page, put something about Gabby Petito, like just... Like, I guess a link to her case. And I probably, I might do it. I don't know. But anyway, the coroner used dental records and DNA analysis to identify his body. Bloomington police said uh, Day's relatives had previously submitted DNA samples to aid the search. There were no words to clearly communicate our devastation. Day's family said in a statement, our hearts are broken. Um, Day's case recently gained new prominence as his mother, Carmen Bolden Day, called for authorities to show the same attention and urgency in her son's case as they did for Gabby Petito, the 22-year-old white woman who went missing and was later found dead. Bloomington police have said Day went missing in unexplained, suspicious circumstances as the agency confirmed the recovery of a man's body, it said toxicology testing will be undertaken in an attempt to learn how Day died. The last place Day was seen, police said, was at a store in the Beyond Hello Cannabis dispensary chain. Okay, finally, because I was like, where was the last place he was seen? So we finally figured that out. Identification of Day's bodies, I'm sorry, identification of Day's Body comes after weeks of uncertainty and dread. As his family and friends waited to hear from the coroner, who was in turn waiting for the results from the state police crime lab. I couldn't put myself in their shoes. It was just tough. Bloomington Police Public Information Officer John Fernan, according to WGLT, I'd want to know the answers, good or bad, to start the grieving process. So I think it's and I think it's good in that aspect. So that was there. And um, I'm going to play. Now, this was um, this was a mother. This was, uh, I guess, before. Yeah, this was back in September on the 21st when she was um, pleading for help to find her missing son. Hopefully this just doesn't get my channel compromise but we're gonna go see what happens um there we go 
has been missing since August 24th. I didn't speak to my son one day and I reported him missing. A mother is begging for answers nearly a month after her son went missing. Joanny Day's story is being shared widely on social media with the hopes that someone knows something that can help find the ISU student. Tia Ewing joins us from Studio 32 with more from Day's mother. Well, Jelani Day's car was found, and so were the clothes he was wearing the last time he was seen, but almost a month later and still no signs of the Illinois State University student. They hadn't spoken to Gabby in two weeks, in over two weeks. When they reported her missing, they found her within three days. Carmen Bolden Day says she never went a day without speaking to her son, Jelani. The 25-year-old is on the path to being a doctor, a grad student at ISU. He's been missing 28 days. The treatment that they're giving to this young white girl is not being the same treatment that they're giving to my young black son. And I'm angry about it, and I want that same treatment for my son. Carmen is talking about this, an all-out manhunt to find Gabby Petito. Sadly, this story has a tragic end, as Petito's body has been identified. There's a disparity there. Um, I understand the circumstances are different. 25-year-old Jelani Day from Danville was last seen on August 24th, captured in these pictures entering a store in Bloomington, Illinois. His 2019 Chrysler 300 was found two days later hidden in the woods, 63 miles away in the town of Peru. A body was found in that same area on September 4th. DNA results are pending. I'm not in denial and I'm not delusional, but since we don't know that that's Jelani, his mother says time is passing and the FBI should come in and help local police. I need you to be looking for Jelani. Bloomington PD says they are still working this case, collecting and analyzing physical and also digital evidence. Live in Studio 32 tonight, I'm Tia Ewing. Okay, so I don't know what I... So, um... Let me go ahead and close that out. Um, wow. So 28 days, that is a long time uh, for a parent awaiting answers and trying to figure out where, you know, her uh, missing child is. So I definitely understand her grievances in, in that respect. And, you know, the circumstances are definitely different with a uh, Gabby Petito case now. I did kind of look into that a little bit more. Um, and I guess maybe so because, you know, with her being on social media and going live and there was just more footage to actually see, you know, so it kind of pieced things um, together. People had a visual to kind of go on. But as far as, you know, that was just from a, a viewer's perspective. Um and definitely doesn't make it any any better, obviously. Um, but you know, from a, a law enforcement perspective, and then you have these law enforcements in in two different states, and so you know everything is done different. I don't know anything behind the scenes as far as law enforcement is concerned. I don't have any experience in that area, but I definitely understand her grievance because I think any parent with a, a missing child will want to have their uh, child receive just as much coverage or, you know, equal coverage um, to make people aware so that maybe um, if anything else, tips, you know, leading to uh, what has taken place um, would be given a lot faster. So anyways, um, I definitely understood where she was coming from with that. Um, now, let me see where I'm at. Okay. So now we're going to fast forward um, because his body was found, uh, identified, and in Huntsville, Alabama, Memorial Service for Alabama A&M graduate Jelani Day will be held on campus this week. Day, who remains, whose remains were found in the Illinois River last month, was last seen alive on August 24th. He was officially identified on September 23rd. So yeah, that was a while. Um, according to 
the news partners at uh, al.com the service is scheduled for wednesday october 6th at 6 11 p.m on the a and m quad um Ni News 19 previously reported that Day's fraternity brothers had created an online petition calling for investigations into Day's death by federal and state authorities. Uh, peti the petition states, Jelani is loved and represents the best of our beloved brotherhood. Therefore, bringing those responsible for this heinous act to justice is not a request, but a requirement. The person or persons responsible for Jelani's death are now walking freely in our community and we will not rest until those responsible are brought to justice. The new Epsilon chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity in a Alabama A&M University. And so um, I haven't found anything uh, else other than what I've just read to you, but I, I, you know, obviously I'm going to have some questions. Uh, you know, what do you guys think is going to be one of the questions I'm going to ask, but also too, um, was any of wh who was, was anyone interviewed or questioned, um, regarding his, uh, disappearance? Uh, Cause I didn't see anything, uh, that stated that, um, was he a regular uh, patron to the to the cannabis dispensary he was uh, he was last seen at? He said that his his clothes were found uh, in his car. You know the clothes that he was last wearing. So how did they find him? You know, and um, they don't seem to be providing a lot of of. Um, details and i don't you know now like i said i'm new here so like all you know i see a lot of other channels they order the discovery and they get all really into it and stuff and i just have to learn about how to do all that the case is still open and and uh hopefully it's still you know active because there's a lot of questions i know she has a lot of questions because i have a lot of questions you know, who was interviewed, who was last seen, what did the cell phone records show? Um, did he communicate with anybody? Did he have any issues or, you know, um, negative interactions with anyone? Did it, did something transpire le leading up to the, you know, days before he went missing? Cause he just, like she said, you just don't disappear in the thin air. So, that's a lot of questions that aren't being, you know, publicly provided. Um, obviously, we know that the uh, police are asking the same questions. And uh, other than his frat brothers, um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of people that are that have said anything. But I've, obviously, I haven't done any extensive research either. So, you know, respectfully have to uh keep that in consideration these are just questions i i would have just you know if i was watching someone else discuss it um but when i was you know researching i pretty much found the same standard um the same standard articles i didn't really get i couldn't find anything that was um you know, given any, given any real details about his friends, his, you know, um, activities, you know, what he was involved in. Um, so that's, that's pretty much where I'm at with it. I don't know. What do you guys think, um, as far as what's happened to him and maybe somebody knows something different. They're familiar with, that area I, i'm not so i don't know um but you know i would definitely like to hear your thoughts on it and uh this video did kind of go live stream rather kind of went a little bit longer than i had intended so i'm getting some notifications on my computer here 
But anyways, just leave your thoughts of what you think may have taken place or any questions that you might have regarding the case as well, like myself. And, um, you know, just let me know what you think. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in, being patient with me, learning, you know, stream yards, learning how to navigate stream yards, how to navigate um, these, you know, true crime uh, cases and stuff like that. Um, I'm just learning as I go and I'm not putting any pressure on myself to be uh any type of way as a content creator i'm just doing it you know how i feel led to do it and what's comfortable to me really so um like i said earlier in the beginning uh before the discussion i was asking if anyone knows how to uh put a link because you know at some point oh i see it says invite so i'm thinking maybe if i do that it would create some type of link maybe and i could drop it into um the chat and you guys will be able to see it and then i guess click on it and join the panel or something like that um because at some point in the future i would like to set up some some panels and discuss some cases uh as they develop or even just you know previous cases uh, one of them that really was interesting to me is a lot of details that go with it, but that's the Scott Peterson case. Um, and I recently was reading that he was uh, requesting a, what do they call that? Um, an appeal. So I'm not to follow up to see what happened with that. Um, but anyways, thank you again for tuning in to True Crime Vibes. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. I will make a more um intentional commitment to to broadcast you know weekly um as cases come across my i wouldn't say my desk <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i mean just as, as i come across a case that may be of interest to me and that i feel needs to be uh reported or spoken on um i will definitely be more intentional about being consistent uh as a content creator and uh hopefully some things will change as i i learn how to navigate um stream yard so i can be all fancy and 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 probably upgrade the service and and give you guys some good quality content so thank you so much for tuning in i hope you guys don't forget to uh leave a comment uh what you guys think may have happened um don't forget to like share subscribe uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos or uh, live streams. And I uh, thank you for your time. You guys have a great week. Later.